Alicia won't say good morning, so I'll say it for her. <laughs> good morning, y'all. And guess what? Today's a big day for Alicia. Hey. What's today? Today is my one month checkup. I might get to start walking today. I'm so excited. I have waited so long for this day. Uh, you've actually waited just one month. <laughs> it feels like the longest month of my life. So a quick question. Yes. Are you going to pass the test on your exercises? I think so. Yeah. Um, He's going to know. Yeah, there's just, I've been moving it really good. I can go up and down. I can do circles, but it's when I try to go from the right side to the left that it doesn't want to turn left. <laughs> so I don't know what he's going to say about that. That's the only thing I'm concerned about, but hopefully it's good news. Hopefully I don't have to have any physical therapy and I'm just ready to start walking like you have never known. My prediction is he's going to tell you to start walking with crutches Yeah. and try to do it so much time a day until it hurts because it's going to be sore. Oh yeah. I used my knee scooter for the first time the other day you guys and I was like for hours I was going around the house doing good. The next day my thigh on that <laughs> leg oh my god I couldn't even touch it like it was so sore so I'm sure just a little bit of walking is going to make this all sore again but I'm still ready. I can take soreness. I cannot <laughs> take sitting on that couch any longer. <laughs> All right, so we're going in to get a checkup and we'll let you know how it turned out. Good news. Alicia still has crutches and a broken ankle, but <laughs> it's not broken. It's still mending. It's fixed. <laughs> it's still a work All in except progress. For a whoop. Yeah. <laughs> Anterior something. I don't know. Doctor talk. <laughs> he said some words. So you want to tell them how how not smart we are? <laughs> oh yeah. We thought we were here for our four week checkup. He's like, no, I don't see patients at four weeks. You're here for your six week checkup. We forgot. It's been four weeks since we've seen him. We're at six weeks post surgery. No wonder it's seven like weeks an eternity post walking. Yes, but we got great news today. He was very happy with the movement. Nothing he did hurt me. Thank goodness. That's what I was worried about when he was moving it himself. He gave me some pointers on what to do to make it a little more flexible and I can start putting weight on it. I like, I think it was really funny that when he was like, we asked him how, what 50% weight means. He looked at you and he knows how to answer this one woman in the room. He goes, this is a hypothetical number. I'm not saying this is a number of anyone in this room, yeah, but said, if you have a person that weighs 200 pounds, put a hundred pounds down. Not yeah. saying that's anyone's weight in this room. And I was like, yeah, man, said, if there was a guy in there, he wouldn't have said any of that. He said, don't be offended. And all I can think in my head is he should probably use the number 100. Like, <laughs> say you weigh 100 pounds, then start with 25 pounds, then go to 50, then 75. That's a lot better than hearing <laughs> other numbers. <laughs> Women don't like to hear numbers. <laughs> so we have six weeks before we have to see him again. Yes. And he said over the next month, four weeks, you're going to go to 100% walking with the boot. With the boot, but I'm going to start putting my weight on it and my crutches. And he expects to see you in six weeks without a boot on walking on your own. Hopefully. He said, maybe. I said, I will. <laughs> he said, you might walk in here with nothing. I said, no, I will walk in here with nothing. So at four weeks, I should be able to put 100% weight and maybe only have one crutch, he said. And then I can start using without the boot and then I'm home free. <laughs> so. Do you think we're going to be able to travel for Thanksgiving? It's not the being there for Thanksgiving part that I'm worried about. It's the drive there that I'm worried about because my foot doesn't like to be down. It starts to swell. So that's the only part I'm concerned with. We might have to break the trip up into a lot of little, <laughs> little moves to get there. So it might take us a while to get there. It's but actually not that far. Well, it's not that far normally, but like an hour of my, my <laughs> leg not being elevated, it, it tends to blow up. But I'm hoping that once I start putting weight on it and start moving it more, I think we'll be better. So maybe we'll see. Maybe we get to go on a little vacation for Thanksgiving. We need one. Welcome back guys. So the doctor cleared Alicia to start walking again, or the process of starting to walk again with weight, which means we are now getting ready to start planning our next travels. And for us, that's three weeks away. For you guys, we're about two and a half weeks ahead of you. By the time you see this video, we'll already be there. That means we're now gonna be able to spend Thanksgiving with family in Branson. Well, close to Branson. We'll be actually be in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. And then the week after that, we'll be in Branson with Phil Lolo, Thomas and Beverly. Now, we're starting to gear up 
for hitting the road again and we actually were not planning on traveling at all until after christmas alicia's been walking right now she's starting to think that it's time to get back on the road and now recently i made a video where i told you guys all the things you did not need to start living the rv life and y'all loved it and y'all actually requested i make a video about all the things you do need well we've made that video as well i made a list of all things that we chose to upgrade our purchase to enhance our experience the way we live in our camper. And I forgot a big thing, and a lot of you guys pointed that out. I didn't talk about the tools we carry in this truck. The video is based around accessories and things related to RVing. That's all I chose to include in the video of the things I think you need. But a big part of us being successful on the road full time is the tools we carry in this truck. So before we talk about the toolbox, let's talk about the bed of our truck. So we run the backflip mx4 bed cover and it's a hard folding tonneau cover and the reason we like this is because when we're not towing we need to use the bed of our truck as a trunk and we carry things like our ice chest our strollers our chairs things we don't want getting wet out in the elements and we like to store them in here because we're a family of five and in there is very full so the reason we like this thing is because it folds up out of the way and we can hook up to our trailer and it still clears the fifth wheel when making 90 degree turns. So now I told you why we chose the backflip as our tonneau cover, it'll make more sense while we have the toolbox we do. Since we had the backflip and this is the towing position, we had to get a toolbox that would work with this. So when you go to the fully up position on the backflip, you're left with this right here. We went with the UWS low profile under tonneau cover. And that's because you can see right here, the lid does not go all the way back to the corner it stops halfway that allows you to open it up and have access to everything in your toolbox with the bed cover still in the way this is actually made for an f-150 because it's designed to fit between the wheel wheels i requested that they make me one that would fit right here and right here and an f-350 and the price is gonna be about three times as much. So we decided to use this one instead. I thought I was giving up too much space as far as what I could carry inside that toolbox, but turns out this has been great for us. And the little side areas, which I thought were wasted space, have worked out great for holding things like firewood and water bottles and, and our chairs out of the way and giving me more space right here for other things. Also, I usually put some of our jack pads right there besides the toolbox on travel days. Are you guys ready to see what's in the toolbox? Here we go. This right here is everything that I thought I needed or might need while living on the road full time. Before we talk about what's in each bag, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how much this toolbox actually holds. This thing right here holds way more than you think. Oh my God. You guys aren't gonna believe this. We've been looking for this. It's Phil's chair. Phil's been looking for his chair. I didn't know it was in there. There's so many things you can store in this toolbox. So as you can see, from all the things we pulled out of here, there is tons of room to store everything you might possibly need. We have all this stuff fitting inside that toolbox. Now it does take some skill and some Tetris-like moves to get all this stuff to work out, but we have managed to make all these things work and these are all the things that we have found that help us full-time living. I went ahead and set up Phil's chair, so hopefully he will help me, at least the chair will, to discuss all these things with you guys. But I've been wondering, I wonder if the snap thing works for Phil's chair. Let's see. Hey, it does work. Phil, where you been? Hey, by the way, I found your chair. I've been hunting that thing. It was in my toolbox. Did you know that toolbox could hold so much? No, I did not. So anyway, you're going to help me explain all the tools we have today for all of them to see? I sure will. You actually were here whenever I decided to buy all these tools and make them fit in there. I said they probably wasn't going to fit. In no particular order, I'm going to start showing you each item and I'll go through and tell you why we have that and why it was useful for us to have it in the toolbox. First up. These are actually fishing tackle boxes and I have all my electrical connections in here that I might ever need. Now, I used all this stuff in my past life and some of it in my current life. Now, everything in this toolbox has allowed me to do all the upgrades to the truck you've ever seen as far as the train horn system, the air compressor system, and recently the air valve system. And I use some of these in the RV repairs as well. Next up is another tackle box with hardware and some shrink wrap because it didn't fit in that one. But all this is hardware I might need or have used 
to add things to the RV or make repairs to the RV, as well as all the work done on the truck. Having all this stuff for the electrical and the mechanical still doesn't stop me from making trips to the blue store, but I can usually get things done without maybe going to the blue store. But you can ask Alicia, I always find a reason to go to the blue store. Up next is this Craftsman Versa Stack box, and this is kind of an overflow box. It's got a hacksaw, a square, some drill bits. It's got a stud finder, which doesn't do you very much good in an RV. Staple gun level, some uh, ball ping hammers, some pry bars, basically a lot of carpentry stuff in here. And me and Phil actually used this last Christmas when we did a whole bunch of shelves for a lady here in town. And we actually used everything in this box plus everything in this truck to do that job. And that's what's good about all these tools is I've managed to use everything in this truck for everything I've ever done on this channel. So when we did our maintenance on our camper, as far as taking the hubs off and repacking the bearings, we changed our pin box out. We made the jack blocks. We uh, made the modifications inside the camper for all of our shelves to utilize our space better. We modified the Happy Jack bed system. We installed the train horn, the air compressor, the shocks, the airbags. Everything you've ever seen on this channel has been done with just the tools in the back of this truck. Up next is safety devices. I've never had to use these, but I had them just in case. And this is a box of my road triangle. So if we're ever stuck on the side of the road and we're in a dangerous position and we need to work on something, I can put out my safety triangle so that people will know that we are stranded on the side of the road. Hopefully I never have to use those, but I have them. Craftsman torque wrench. It's a half inch drive and goes up to 250 foot pounds. We use this every time we do something to the truck or the trailer to make sure our torque is correct. We have another Craftsman box and in here is my air tools. So I have all these air driven tools so I can run these flapper wheels and grinding wheels to make any repairs or modifications I need. And below I have some extra fasteners and some crow's feet. And that right there is some wire loom stuff that I use around the truck to protect certain parts of the wires I've ran. This is an oil thing I used to have. It's a die and tap set. And I do use this quite often because you always want to fix what you got instead of having to work around making something new. You don't necessarily have to have this. This is something I used almost daily in my last life and I've only had to use it a few times in my new life. But a good tap and die set is always a must if you're gonna be working a lot. We have this box of spare parts for the air system. So this is everything I might need to make repairs to our onboard air system, our air compressor, our air tank, our airbags, anything in the system we have right here. This is all of our Vi Air accessories. So in this thing right here, we have one of our hoses as well as all of our adapters to hook up to our onboard air to fill up air in the tires or run air tools. We also have a spare hose and we have this right here, which is a digital air pressure gauge. And we also have a backup that is an analog air pressure gauge. So we also have these Dewalt drill bit and adapter sets. This one has drill bits in it, as well as all the adapters for any kind of fastener you may use. This is the same thing, and this one is kind of my overflow. It has uh, oddball adapters and things like that. So the next thing I'm gonna show you is all of my power tools. Now, I actually like to be a fan of Dewalt. It's because it's what I started with, and I've expanded my set to help me. I know you're gonna say, but there's Milwaukee and there's Makita and there's all these other brands out there. I will admit Milwaukee is nice, but I am a fan of Dewalt and they have never let me down. So I'm gonna stick with Dewalt. Plus it's really easy to expand the set. So whatever you have, cause I have the 20 volt series and I can buy anything that's 20 volt and it'll work with my current batteries. I know they all do that, but I really am a fan of Dewalt. Plus, Dewalt's an excuse to go to the blue store. So first up, we have our big Dewalt bag, and this is mostly gonna be carpentry stuff. We have our six inch circular saw. I also bought this right here. This is our jigsaw. These two things right here did everything I needed to help finish out an attic and to finish out a dock and get the house ready to be sold. Sawzall. I actually didn't know what to use this for, but I found that this thing is great for trimming trees when we had our old house. Now it's actually helped me do several things on the RV, like when I made the modifications to the Happy Jack system, as well as when I had to fix the bracing that goes underneath the camper to hold the underbelly up. This right here saved the day. And in here I have extra blades for all of them. So extra jigsaw blades, extra sawzall blades, and one extra circular saw blade. So I also have this 20 volt max drill. I actually have two of these. I keep one in the truck and one stays in the RV. The next thing is our sander. This is a Dewalt sander, but it's the only one that is not battery operated. That's because when I bought it, they didn't have the battery operated sander at the time. And the quarter one's done just fine. And I just haven't had a reason to upgrade. But this sander right here has seen some things. How many things have you sanded with that sander, Phil? Nine closets, uh, <laughs> plus a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> yeah, Phil is our sander man. 
And Phil has spent some quality time holding on this sander. I actually think this is a great sander. I'm not sure if the battery one would survive. Well, actually, I know the batteries wouldn't have survived how much time Phil spends with it. I have a 20 volt max Dewalt impact driver, a Dewalt heat gun, which comes in handy for all the wiring I've done because I heat shrink all my wires. The flashlight, but that's only because it came with the kit. I have this small impact driver that I use to drive screws and stuff into things around the camper because they need a little bit more power than a regular drill. This is one of the most important things I think you should have. If you're gonna have any tools in your truck, you need to have a mechanic set in your truck because this gives you the most available options for fixing whatever problem you might have. All right, so here's the inside of our mechanic set. Now it has quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch drive sockets and ratchets. It also has some deep sockets. This only goes up to one inch, and I'll explain more about some of the things in that bag and why I have them because it goes above and beyond what this thing offers. This thing also has a set of combination wrenches and uh, standard and metric as well as some metric and standard allen wrenches and over here some more deep sockets last but not least is the two most important things i have in this toolbox and these are bags and these bags serve a purpose i used to work offshore and i had ways that i did things based on the jobs i was going to do in 15 years you start to break a habit so this is the the way that i organize my tools so this one right here is my everyday stuff plus mostly mechanical and this right here is going to be my electrical bag. And that's the way I used to work offshore. I had a bag for mechanical stuff. I had a bag for electrical stuff. I also had a bag I carried around for troubleshooting so I could figure out which one of these bags I might need. I'm going to start you off with the electrical bag. So I've emptied my electrical bag out and these are all the things that are inside it. And I'll go through each bag and tell you what they are. This red bag is my Allen wrench set and some ratcheting combination wrenches. And that is an old habit from the oil field. I always need Allen wrenches or a ratcheting wrench to get into an electrical box. This is my new Klein Tools amp clamp for AC and DC amps. This was actually something you guys saw recently that I bought to uh, help troubleshoot the truck. This is a temp gun. I always thought I'd use it to uh, check the temperature on my axle bearings and everything while I was traveling. But instead, this is more like a toy for the kids to play with. They love to find out how hot things are all the time. This right here is my Fluke multimeter. I use this almost every time there's a problem electrical not just for truck and rv stuff but even around the house i fixed quite a few things for phil and phil's family and friends because of this guy right here this right here is a metric combination wrench set and that goes back to my old oil field days every time you worked on an electrical box offshore it was guaranteed it's gonna be metric to get inside the box all right so the brown bag is zip ties and some extra electrical connections so this bag right here has a solder gun and i've never had to use that in my new life but i use that all the time when i was working offshore this bag right here is the money maker this is all the electrical tools you need to work on electrical problems so i got wire strippers wire crimpers you name it i got it in this bag and it's everything you need to do electrical work in this small bag right here i have some small electrical screwdrivers we used to call them tweakers i don't know if you're allowed to say that anymore but that's what we used to call them but it's got all the different head sizes and things you would need for very small electrical things all right now that i've shown you all my electrical stuff i'm going to show you all my mechanical and everyday uses are in this bag right here so everything is out of the mechanical bag and here it is i leave the gloves in there because most of the time when i need these tools i probably should put gloves on right here we have an assortment of all kinds of hammers i actually carry four this one right here is the one i actually use the least i use this one a lot for fixing things on the rv and wheel bearings and axles i actually I helped Phil fix the trailer axis on his uh, lawn mowing trailer, and this came in very handy because we were having to drive bushings in. And these right here, these are great. This is actually a dead blow hammer and a baby dead blow hammer. These are great to hit things when you want to hit them hard but not break them. We have a half inch breaker bar, a half inch ratchet, a big pair of channel locks, and a big old crescent wrench. And then we have the best crescent wrench ever made, a Baco. If you worked offshore, you know what this is. This little crescent right here is only eight inches long, but look how wide it goes. I believe it goes to an inch and a quarter. So it goes almost as wide as that right there, that's 20 inches long. This is something that I bought to go work overseas one time and I thought I'd never use it again. It turned out to be one of my favorite sets of wrenches. This is an angle wrench set and it's all standard and it's something I used. Actually, I used this entire kit right here to take apart three brand new pieces of equipment and put them back together. And it came in handy because it was mostly a hydraulic job and we had to put over 300 hoses a piece on each machine back in place. Well, if you've ever done anything hydraulics, you know that that one right there gets you in trouble. This guy right here, the angle, oh man, this changes everything. So I love this tool set so much, I actually decided to keep it and it gets to travel with me. So up next in the blue bag, 
This is another set of combination wrenches in standard. And I keep that in there because I already have a set in my electrical bag, but I need one in my mechanical bag because I like to take the bag for what I'm likely gonna do. That way I'm not carrying both bags. In the brown bag is all of my pliers and cutters. So anything you need to hold something or cut something is in here. This orange bag goes along with this mechanic set and the sockets. In here is all the adapters and accessories I may need as well as sockets that are bigger than one inch. But in here I have my swivels and my adapters to go from half inch to three eighths and three eighths to a quarter. And last but not least in the other blue bag is all of my screwdrivers. So in here is a screwdriver set. Now that I've shown you everything that's in the toolbox in the bed of the truck, we're gonna put it all in there and then we're gonna show you what's under the back seat of the truck and what tools we have at the RV. I'm gonna show you what's under the back seat and the little toolbox in there. So you lift the seat up and most of the things in here I don't need to get to because normally there's car seats in the way. So the things down here are things I need, but I don't need every day. Our airbag control system right here. This is our plumbing for our gauges so we can control our airbags right here. This is the air pressure in the airbags and our system pressure. We also have a set of jumper cables. We have an assortment of straps. We have assortment of tie downs. We have our reducer sleeve from three inch to two and a half. We have our ball for our gooseneck for our BMW hitch if we ever wanted to tow a gooseneck trailer. We have our spare tire kit to get the spare tire down. We also have these things, which these are actually in here because they came out of my old truck. And that is what we keep in the toolbox under the seat. And the reason we keep it here is because we don't ever have to use it all the time, but it's nice to have. So now we've shown you all the tools that we carry in the truck, me and Phil are gonna head to the RV and show you all the additional tools we have at the RV that help us live full-time on the road. So we made it to the RV. Now we don't keep a whole lot of tools here at the RV because most of them are in the truck. Hey Phil. Hey. But we do have some things here. Now there are some tools here, but most of them are camping related tools. This is our Dewalt vacuum cleaner and it runs off batteries. Now this thing is actually awesome. Our RV came with a central vac system and we actually use this guy right here more than we use that. That thing right there vacuums the inside of this camper and the inside of that truck. This is my second drill that I keep here at the RV in the basement storage because most of the things that need to be fixed or addressed in the camper, I don't want to go get out of the truck. So I come right outside, I grab my drill, this guy right here, because most of the things in the RV are the square fitting, but there are some Phillips heads and I can repair just about everything and say the RV, which is this guy's right here. If it involves tools from the truck, it got serious. This, I already showed you, I have one in the truck. I also keep one here at the RV. I have a lighter, I have a paint scraper, and I have a Phillips head screwdriver. And this is to replace batteries and all my kids' toys. If you're a parent, you know how important this guy is right here. This is where all my batteries are charged. So I have two chargers right here on the wall, as well as all these battery holders to hold the charge batteries. And this is my fire starter. I know what you're saying. I can't believe you start fires that way. Yes, I do cheat. I use a torch to start fires. That's because my kids have a low attention span. When they say they want a fire, they don't want it when it wants to start, they want it right now. So we have a torch to start fires. We have this expandable rake. It actually expands to a full size rake and it's awesome. We've used it several times here in Texas and Louisiana. And in Florida, this comes in handy because you can clean your site as well as you get free fire starter. This is actually another thing I bought. It's a small shovel, which I thought we'd use more often, but most of the time they already have a fire pit. We actually do use it to clean out the fire pits and we used it on the beach. Last but not least, every man needs a hatchet. Never used it, but I thought I would because we're living in the RV and we're camping and I need a hatchet. Turns out my Sawzall that I showed y'all earlier cuts firewood way better than this thing. So this is just here because I believe every man needs a hatchet in his life. We have this 16 foot adjustable ladder that folds up to about three and a half foot and stores in our RV. The reason we have it is because I can't reach anything up there without a ladder. We just got a package in. And in this package is something I'm gonna do a video on. This is called Unique Camping and Marine. They have products to help with your black and gray tanks. Don't worry. I'm not sponsored by them. They actually reached out to me and wanted to sponsor me, 
but I wanted to use the product myself before agreeing to sponsor with them. I have an idea. You guys saw a video a while back where I had the toilet paper experiment and I found out does toilet paper actually matter in an RV? And we only used water and we agitated and we found out that it doesn't matter what kind of toilet paper you have. If you have enough water and agitation, it will break down in a tank. But a lot of you guys suggested I test the chemicals. So that's why I got that. I'm gonna put up Unique against the Happy Camper and the TST from Walmart. And we're gonna do the same kind of test with toilet paper and water and agitation and find out how much do the chemicals help break down the stuff in the tanks. We should have a control one with just water so we can see the difference between what water does and what these chemicals do. You guys let me know. Is that something you guys might want to watch? We think it'd be interesting because the toilet paper and water was very interesting for us and we learned that we could probably use any toilet paper and get away with it. But now I'm curious. How do the chemicals that go in the tanks affect the toilet paper and the stuff inside? Another thing we need to talk about is you guys have shown so much support for Phil that we're coming out with a line of shirts for Phil. Team Phil shirts. We're going to have three or four variations that are out there. It'll be involving him and his chair and some of his sayings. So go along with this video. We also decided we're going to have a Team Blue, a Team Orange, and a Team Green Store shirt available because you guys have shown me, you guys actually do like to watch the videos when we go to the blue store, the orange store. We haven't been to the green store yet, but when we start traveling again, we are gonna go to the green store. So let me know, would you guys want some Phil merch and some team blue, orange or green store shirts? So that's all the tools that we keep in our truck and RV. And we hope this helps you out. Now, let me know in the comments down below if there's some tools I missed, because you know I just need an excuse to go back to the blue store and buy something new. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with us. Love you guys, see you later.